Yeah. And that that is still an issue is can you create the team with the right qualities mm. and the right passion to do what needs to be done? What what is exactly does that mean having not having a transactional relationship with a patient but having a lifelong relationship with a patient and team? What what do you mean by that? It means listening. It means asking questions. It means empathy. It means designing a treatment plan that works for them, not works for me or you. And it's it's having the team in place at that practice who can sell that case. Welcome to another episode of the Full Arch Advantage. My name is Gary Bird. I am the founder of SMC National, where we help you create, convert, and close more full arch cases. And today I have a doozy for you. I have Margaret, who is the founder at i3 Ignite, and she was the foremost former COO at Clear Choice Dental Implant Centers. She started with them at their first practice, and she's going to share with you the secrets that they had and using and growing their practices and can help you get more full arch cases at your practices. You are not going to want to miss this because she shares what she's currently doing for her clients to help them grow. Stay tuned. All right, Margaret. So why don't you tell me what it was like and what were the, like, the main things that really drove business at Clear Choice? Because I know you were there as a COO at practice number one and help them really scale. So what were like the key ingredients that they had to have or that you helped implement to help get more full arch cases when you're starting with basically zero? So, you know, I love that you use the word ingredients because I love to cook. It's like one of my passions. So I am all about ingredients and understanding how to riff on ingredients in a recipe. Um, So you can tailor it to your own taste, right? Um, so I I have it was such an exciting time. I'd done startups before. I'd done startups um in large, large publicly held companies. And the 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 two co-founders of Clear. Sorry to disrupt the show, but I got something crazy to share with you. We are attempting to connect with all of our listeners. We have thousands of people that listen to this podcast and we want to meet you in person. We have four events coming up and I want to give you a discount code that you can use for the next week to save $300 off your ticket. The discount code is Gary Bird and the link is going to be just down below. You can also go to smcnational.com forward slash events. I hope to connect with you in person and help each other grow our businesses. Can't wait to see you soon. Clear choice. Uh, one was a doc, Dr. Don Maloney. Um, the other was Steve Boyd. And Steve Boyd, I worked for for four and a half years at a very large publicly held company. So, so I, Steve and I had a rhythm of working together, which we knew worked. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that ingredient was was important. When I think about kind of how how we gelled as a team, that's even more critical because Steve and I had a relationship. They actually had either one or two COOs before they hired me mm. and they just didn't work because this was they were creating a new model that it takes a ton of innovative thinking and then understanding how to translate that into project plans and training and hiring and wow, all that's such things. a good it, that's such a good point because it wasn't just that it was a new product from the standpoint of the kind of treatment that they were doing at scale right so that was new but it was also the business model there wasn't any single location group practices let alone doing all on four right like there wasn't aspen wasn't that big yet. And there, you know, uh, there, so you really were, you were, you were forging so many roads at the same time. So we, um, and I love doing that. Right. So Steve knew and Steve knew that I could do that. Um, and for me, what was different is I knew nothing about dental zero. I'd been in healthcare. Yeah. Um, but I knew nothing about dental. So I I think for me, 
that whole um, ability to come together as a team mm. to really work this, to develop and work this new model was pivotal. And so do you, would you put that, that under, would you put that under culture, like the culture that you guys had? Totally. Okay. Totally. And I, I do a lot of work with startup implant practices and implant centers today. Yeah. And that, that is still an issue is can you create the team with the right qualities mm. and the right passion to do what needs to be done. Because when we, you know, God, when we created that model, there was nobody else doing this yeah. anywhere. And so we had a lot of room for error. <laughs> yeah, which yeah. Today, people just don't have. Yeah. So <clears throat> if I think about the ingredients for the recipes, <clears throat> I'm going to start with relationship. And for me, that's, that was the big takeaway because and when I talk about relationship, it's a relationship with a prospective patient because remember they are not your patient yet. They are a prospective patient. Mm, so it's yep. relationships that you're building with that prospective patient and it's relationship that you're building on your team. And neither of those relationships is transactional. They mm. aren't, they are not transactional. This is, um, think of it as like a lifelong friendship. Because yeah. if you don't think about these relationships this way, you're going to experience huge amounts of turnover on your on your team. Because yeah. this is hard work, really hard work. And it, you know, the clinical isn't that much different than anything else. But the nature of have of converting prospective patients to patients is really hard. Mm. Yeah, I love that. Now, I know you said there that you help a lot of practices add full arch to their practices, right? So you're working with GP offices that say, hey, yeah. we want to get into this. Clinically, I understand how to do it. I've got my reps in. Now I want to yeah. add it to my practice. <clears throat> what are the biggest roadblocks that people face when adding full arch to their practices? Um, the team. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> so, yeah. so is it, I mean, is it, it because... This is it, Okay, is it because they're going from basically, I'm going to use a different industry as an example. You're going from car sales to yacht sales. Is that why? Is it just such a big jump? Or is there other components there that from a logistics standpoint, it just is, it's way different? That's not, I don't think that's a big switch. And, Got it. And, and I, you know, listen, I did, I spent most of my summers in Michigan growing up, and we always had a. My brothers sailed the Chicago Mackinac twice. Um, we're kind of a boating ish family, right? We always had boats growing up. I understand, and I have a. <laughs> I understand that sales difference. So it's even a bigger difference than that. It's and it goes back to this whole relationship piece. You can't just do things in a kind of a rote way, you have to get to know every single prospective patient at a relationship level, not a transactional level. Got and, it. And that is super hard to do. So let's, so let's dive goes, in. That's the biggest roadblock. You'd say that's the number one roadblock. And then, yep. So well, how can do you, I do number two though? Yeah. At yeah. The same let's do time? it. Yep. Okay. The other is targeting and marketing the two together like target markets and then marketing to them. Yeah. So at Clear Choice, when we first started, we thought it'd be the super rich, the guys who and gals who are buying the yachts you were just talking about. Yeah, yeah. Who, right, who are going to be our, our, our patients. And in fact, that proved not to be true. Mm. And um, our target market was not the super rich. It was retired firefighters, retired school teachers, um, just like regular people. Like why, do you, us, why do you think that right? is? Why, why do you think that people with money weren't buying all in for as much as you guys thought? Like what, what, what was the, what I, was the problem there? I did a lot of research on this um, and, and collected some data. It is very, very difficult to collect people who are wealthy from their GP practice. And that is a huge advantage for these GP practices. Mm. Okay. So these let me just frame, GP let, me just, let me just frame this for the audience and, and you can tell me if I got this right. So the people with money already are going to the dentist. They're already paying for their general dentistry. 
and they're more likely to stay there and stay in net, like stay if they refer them to a doctor for all I'm for, that's the way they're going to get the treatment done. They're not going to go to Google and or, or on Facebook and try to find somebody to do their treatment. Is that is that accurate? A hundred percent. And let me just give you a few very personal examples. I've had one parent and two siblings and one niece, all of whom live in the Phoenix area, all of whom needed implants. And so they called me and said, hey, I'm thinking I should just use my regular GP for implants. I said, I need a single. They were all singles. And I said, this is the GP I saw most of my life. (laughs) and still no. And um, I said, you know what? I really think given the location and from kind of what I can tell your doctor said, you need to go someplace where all they do is implants. And I will just a personal story. So not, you know, my observations, not data I collected, trying to unhook my own mother and my siblings from the dentist that we've been going to for 40 years was close to impossible. I prevail. I prevailed. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Right. Yeah, that's a great but point. It was really, really hard. Um, and so, I think I think that data that I had collected is still very relevant, and it's a huge advantage to GPs that I don't yeah. think they know about, and I don't think they. They, so basically, um, they're sitting. They're sitting on a bunch of. They're sitting on a bunch of full arch cases and don't even realize it, right? Because they don't offer that kind of treatment, so they're not really thinking that way. Right. Yeah. So what right. could a what could an office? Let's say an office that's seeing about fifty new patients a month. Uh, they're doing like two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars a month in collections. Two hundred thousand dollars in collections. How mm-hmm. how much if you were to go in and work with somebody like that? And, and, and keeping in mind, you know, I know that some offices have older patients, some have younger, but assuming that, you know, you're their middle of the road, a little bit of each, what, what kind of number, what kind of numbers could they expect from a full arch standpoint if they started without even marketing, just internal marketing and, and getting patients too, to come in that way? Too hard to tell. Is that okay? Because it, it, it there's too much variation in, in those practices, frankly. <laughs> Mm, okay. So, so let's- if they've got, right, if they're, if they're, and, and I will just say, I always suggest people use marketing. Yeah. They I'm identify the target market that they want to serve in terms of age, type of case or procedure, level of difficulty of cases, all those things. And they say, <clears throat> okay, here are the people we're going to target. And they go first into their database and say, okay, it's we're gonna we're gonna target these hundred people in our database. And the next time they come in, we're gonna put a note on their record, which we expect you, the hygienist, or you the DA, and me as the doc to to follow up on. And we're gonna follow up with each other to make sure we're doing that. Mm. Mm. That's great. Because if you don't do that. Those patients, you know how busy everybody is in dental right now. The hygienist is not looking, you know, for full arch cases. And, and so they just don't see them. Hmm. Yeah. Um, So they have got to do that first, have to do that first. And it's really hard to predict how, how, um, how, how the the um, outcome is going to happen. Yeah. How clear they are on how to make this happen. Got it. And then, so one of the things. And how they're going to hold each other accountable, right? Because holding each other accountable is critical. Got it. So, so let's go back to the first point that you made that you said the relationship with the patient is the most crucial thing. So if you mess that up, then you just, you don't have anything really. And, and I get that because even if you have amazing marketing, it doesn't matter if you don't have that formula, right? So what what is exactly does that mean having not having a transactional relationship with a patient but having a lifelong relationship with a patient and team what what do you mean by that it means listening it means asking questions it means empathy it means designing a treatment plan that works for them not works for me or you 
And it's, it's having the team in place at that practice who can sell that case. And in a competitive environment, I know dental doesn't like the word sell. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a fact of life. And, and if you want to compete against other practices that you know they are going to be talking to, because everybody's going to Google and looking up, you know, dental implants, and then they take a little five question survey, and then it comes back with an answer and, and they decide, yeah, they're going to schedule an appointment there. And then they find somebody else who they like better. So they never show up for that appointment and they never return your confirmation messages. <clears throat> I mean, it just, it's a, it's a nightmare unless you are really clear about your focus on relationships um, with with prospective patients and with your own team members that we don't do like we don't do transactional stuff for mm -hmm. implants we just don't got it and so what how, how would somebody functionally set that up like what's the difference between the relationship from like a gp patient to a full arch patient from your perspective like what's the gap that people are trying to jump over Meaning, meaning why, why is so, it, why is that like, why is that the thing? Because if I'm already a dentist and I'm already treating patients and I have hygiene patients and I, they come back every six months and I'm doing small amounts of treatment and they're referring their friends and family to me. Why is that such a big jump for me to understand that like, this is the most important thing and it's different than what you've been doing? Um, unless you are doing $60,000, $40,000 cases as a perio or oral surgeon, you don't have this in your practice today. Got it. And you don't have the team who can present the treatment in a way that, that a prospective patient says, I want to do the work with you all. With you all, it's not just the doc, it's with you all, the team. This is where I want to have the work done. I'm confident in you. I'm confident that you do what you say you're going to do. You'll deliver what you say you'll deliver. And, um, and the, the, you know, the biggest objection, everybody wants implants. Everybody wants full arches if they've got, dent, you know, the dental situation that requires them. And nobody's trying to push full arches when you don't need them, yeah. I, I would hope. Um, but if you need them, um, then there, you know, there's, n there's so many options out there for you to in investigate, for you to explore, and you've got to have a way to stand out. And I think you've got to be willing to say, we're going to be like, we're going to be competitive about mm. this. We're going to win. We're going to win this. Yeah. So that's, that's a great point. Cause it is becoming, it's way more, um, competitive now than it was, you know, just even a couple of years ago. And I think yeah. that's just going to continue to wrap up because not only do you have GPs that are adding, um, you have a couple things happening. You have GPs who are adding all and four to their practices. You have the guys that have always relied on uh, the, the, the doctors who've always relied on referrals they're starting to market now they're learning how to market and yep. go direct to consumer because yep. their referrals are dropping and you have dso's that are just being set up as hey we're just going to open surgery centers like kind of like the clear right. um um j just like what you did originally so it is much more competitive so what are some of the things that people can do to when you say hey we got to compete what what do you what do you think about or what should somebody really be thinking about in that area of com competition I'd say start at the beginning of the funnel. <clears throat> and the beginning of the funnel is identifying people who would be interested in them. And whether you do that by looking through your existing customer base and their current dental situation, or whether you do marketing, and I recommend everybody does marketing yeah. these days. You just have to do it. You have okay. to create that awareness. Um, I'd say that's, that's, the, that's the beginning. That's the big end of the funnel. And then the question is, how do you, how do you cre start to create a relationship as, so as soon as you get an initial inquiry, the first inquiry, no matter how that comes in, whether it's chat, whether it's a phone call, whether it's whatever, how do you create a relationship in that 
first touch point? And then how do you create relationships all the way through the funnel until you get to somebody who is has agreed to have treatment with you? Got it. And then, okay. So when you're, when you're talking about targeting, what, what are, what are the typical traits that you're seeing around targeting or is it different everywhere that you're looking at? I think it's pretty similar. I think it's probably 55 plus it's, it's still kind of middle market. It's not, unless you're in a practice um, already and they those practices tend to be perio, prost, or super GP. Mm-hmm. And you've got potential candidates there, right? Great. Um, and then I think you just have to do some, you've got to do some marketing that and use A-B testing, which has been around since time was mm-hmm. invented. But say, okay, so does this work better or does this work better? And you can do that AB testing in in that whole funnel. It can be um, AB testing on specific messages that you send out through, through your company. For example, it could be AB testing on the initial inquiry and what you say on the initial inquiry and how you answer questions. Um, And the biggest questions anybody ever has is affordability. Because back to the earlier point, everybody wants this. Yeah. The question is affordability and then confidence. Yeah. How confident are they that you can deliver for them? But right. it's it's all about affordability. And so I make a plea for patient financing and to really understand the patient financing for implants, these are twenty to forty five thousand dollar cases. You have got to find patient financing companies that are going to work with with um, that kind of level of fee. And you've got to find patients who have decent credit scores these days. That was not true three years ago. Wow. Okay. So from the fine, that was actually where I was going to go next. So we're, we're on the same page again. So what are, what are the things that, what, what is the financing that you're seeing right now that's just absolutely killing it? Is there a specific company or is there a specific strategy? What, what are you kind of seeing that's working yeah. right now? There are there companies, yeah, and I'm, you know, I'm happy to talk about some of those, but I prefer not to. If we, it's just because it's yeah, it's totally fine. Every because every practice is different, but yep. hey, I mean, if we want to talk about those, let's do it. What I would say is that you can't have an untrained treatment coordinator trying to to have somebody embrace spending. $40,000 on a double arch or $45,000 on a double arch, unless that treatment coordinator is extremely well-trained mm-hmm. in how to build relationships, even though the doctor has built a relationship, if they're doing the consult, if it's a doctor led consult, people want this. That's the easy stuff. That is the easy stuff. It always has been the easy stuff. The hard part is having enough of a relationship with, with, somebody that they will talk to you about their personal finances. Yeah. That's the hard part. That is. Yeah. And they will let you help them find the best option for them. And that takes a lot of training. Yeah. That's a great call out. All right. So last question for you, you're in a big stadium, you're on the stage in front of 50,000 people. Everybody in this, in the stadium is um, either a practice owner or somebody inside the practice that really wants to grow their practice. They really want to grow their full arch business. What's the, your one piece of advice that you're going to give to them as they start to go down this journey? It's not easy. And prepare yourself and prepare your team to be strong enough and nimble enough to respond quickly and to and be strong enough as a team to hold each other accountable and have ways to hold each other accountable, which is data. Yep. And I'm with use you. that data and use that data every day. And until you get to be as good as clear choices at consultations, every day review with your team the case presentations you did and what you can do better. That's so good. Yep. That's exactly, that's the only way to get better at something is just reps and, and coaching and reps and coaching. So that, that's great. And now, learning if, and learning and learning and learning and learning yep. every day, every yeah. day. Keep growing. I love every that. Day. 
I love that mindset. <laughs> if if someone wanted to reach out to you and get help with their practice, where where could they reach you? How do they get a hold of you? Um, Margaret at i three ignite dot com. Um, or 830-237-1789 is my cell. Shoot me a text. Um, I'd love to talk with you. This Margaret's- is an area I'm really passionate about. So I yeah. love talking about it. Yeah, I love I love working with Margaret. I'm actually getting the opportunity to work with you at the Dykema event. So we're going to be doing an yeah. event together. And I'm super stoked super about excited. that. With yeah, Dee yeah. Fisher, yes. super excited. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. It's hard not to be excited when Dee walks in the room, right? I love I love Dee's energy. <laughs> Love Dee. <laughs> awesome. Well, this is okay. uh, this this has been great. Thank you so much for coming on, sharing your knowledge, and I, I know it's going to be a lot of help to people. So, thank you so much for coming on. Oh, I appreciate it. Thanks so much, Gary. Take care.